Hey guys, right here, welcome to the channel. I like to explore power options when the power goes out. So today I'm just gonna share a quick story of an occasion where I almost killed myself using one of these power stations. So I wanna share that story with you guys so you guys don't make the same mistake that I made. So this story involves this GrowWatt ES3000 model, but it's not really specific to GrowWatt inverters. So according to my understanding, it's kind of the same issue across many of these different inverters out there. I hope they'll fix this problem because there's gonna be some people that are getting hurt using these units. So normally I really love these power stations. You buy a thousand dollar battery and spend $600 on this type of inverter and you can have this really powerful backup power station. It's easy to add more batteries if you want more capacity. And these are really popular. You can plug grid into here to charge your battery. You can connect solar in here to charge your battery. And then obviously you have AC output so you can power your fridges or whatnot. So there is a hidden danger to these units. So this system is in my RV right now. So anyways, we pulled up to where we are camping and I realized I wasn't getting any power, any solar to charge my battery. So I figured that PV terminal must have vibrated loose on the long road trip. So I figured I'm just gonna tighten this PV terminal really quick. So to prevent electricity from going through your chest and your heart, I've heard people also say, you know, just put your one hand in your pocket or behind your back while you're working on things. Yeah, that rule didn't really help me in this scenario. Now, I was really tired. You do stupid things when you're tired. So I figured I'm gonna cover the solar panels. So I cover them with a towel and I come down here and I realize, you know, I've got a disconnect here, solar disconnect in my combiner box. So I totally disconnected the power and I'm just gonna tighten this one screw. Nothing can happen, right? So anyways, I came in here and I tightened the screw and shocked me straight through the chest. Kind of felt like uh, one of those medical uh, defibrillators. It came right through the chest, I felt it. It was the worst shock I've ever experienced. And I think I got really lucky. <clears throat> so after I came to myself, I wasn't sure what had caused the shock. Apparently I had touched something wrong but fast forward a few months, I was watching a video from Will Prowse, thanks Will, and he was mentioning there is a danger shock hazard with these units and 120 volts AC can come down the PV terminals when the inverter is on. So I didn't know that. I'll just show you this right here. Let me get some gloves on. So anyways, I'm gonna turn my solar off. It's hard to reproduce. I wonder if that relay Right now I'm not really seeing any uh, AC coming through. It's really sporadic. Sometimes I do see the 120 volts AC on the terminals there, but I'm gonna just connect it to the AC or the positive PV side and the frame of the grow watt. 100 volts AC. Well, the frame of the grow watt is connected to my RV. So check this out. So I've got 100 volts AC from positive terminal to the frame of my RV. And I figured what I must have done is my index finger must have touched this. I was leaning on this and that's what got me. It went straight through my arm, through my heart and out my elbow here. So I also had one electrician tell me that he checks his conductors before he works with, every, with his wires and he confirms there's no power. Once he's confirmed with his multimeter that there is no power on like the electrical panel, the, main, the, the mains, whatnot, He's confirmed there's no power. Then he goes and he touches them briefly with his fingers just to make sure, tr double check it, that there's no power. Because if he's like, if he grabs the wire later on and he's working on it and there is live power because of his multimeter maybe wasn't working or something like that, if he ended up grabbing that wire, his muscles will tense up and he won't be able to let go of that. Now, you wanna see how much power is going through this? Check this out. This is really sporadic. Sometimes it's there's power and sometimes there's not. So you could test it with your meter and then some relay might turn on and it might be in a different state where it will send power out through that. So here's a, uh, a 10 amp fuse I just jammed in here. I'm just gonna connect this to the positive of the PV terminal and, and we're just gonna touch this. Holy crap, blew a 10 amp fuse. 
So that's enough to kill you right there. Anyone can just be touching the side of their unit just to like tighten up the, the uh, solar wire and you get shocked. So I'm just gonna try this one more time with a 15 amp fuse. So we just blew the fuse there, 15 amps. So I've got a couple EG4 6000 XPs in my garage. Let's go try those. So I just installed this huge solar array, huge for me. These are 540 watt new solar panels actually. They are also from Santan Solar. So they don't just sell used solar panels, they sell new ones as well. And these are bifacial and they were under $200. So um, I've got a full install video of this coming up. Okay, here's my uh, EV car charger. No AC. Test to the frame. No AC power apparently right there. So this one's not connected to the grid. Let's try this other unit. This one is connected to the grid and this one is, I have this wired up to run my entire house. Let's try this one. So here's the inverter is on. Grid is connected to this one. No AC power. So there looks like there's no AC power coming out of the PV side here, but who knows, I don't have PV connected. There might be a relay in here that will switch and send power out of there. Sometimes the GrowWatt does the same thing, but, but ever since I got shocked, I have rules that I follow no matter what. So anytime I'm working in a system like this with electricity, I always wear these electrical gloves. These are Maxi Flex. I've seen electricians wear these and so I just pick some up and they are really comfortable and they're not going to be perfect. There's a little niche in here. You can't just touch things and expect not to get shocked, but it adds a little bit of insulation and it is better than just touching electrical panels with your bare hands and wires. The other thing I'm always going to do, is I no longer use uninsulated screwdrivers for anything. All of my screwdrivers are now insulated. I try not to use these uh, six in ones because I can't insulate them. So I don't really uh, use these anymore. And then another thing I always do, if I open this up, I always will turn off the battery power and then also turn the inverter off, which I wasn't doing before. So following those rules, um, that should make me a lot safer. But let me know if there's anything else you guys think. Go watch Will Prow's video. He has some other tips. And uh, so thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully that will uh, keep some of you guys from getting shocked. Be safe out there. See you later.